the president-elect will be back in his element as he kicks it all off in Indianapolis. He will meet with workers at a plant that was set to close down and move to Mexico, as you by now have heard. Now, roughly a thousand jobs were saved in this transaction, and it has turned some of those who may not have been big supporters kind of around. Watch. I was not a, a, a huge Trump supporter. Um, you know, I, I didn't really know how to take uh, Mr. Trump, uh, um, uh, but uh, I'm glad that he actually lived up to a promise and stuck with it, and, uh, and I'll gladly uh, throw some support to him, and if I get a chance to shake his hand tomorrow to, uh, mm -hmm. to thank him for, for saving my job, I'll, I'll gladly do that. That's going to be an interesting moment to watch, right? Peter Ducey, live outside Trump Tower in New York City. So, Peter, uh, these workers obviously were taken a bit by surprise by all this, right? Big surprise, Martha. I just spoke in the last hour to Chuck Jones, who's the president of the union that represents these workers whose jobs were saved, and he says that he was shocked a deal got done. And he says he was shocked because he's seen eight or ten plant closures in the last few years, and once a company, in his experience, decides they're going to move where the labor is cheaper or just close down altogether, they don't change their minds. Jones also told me this morning that uh, keeping about a thousand workers employed around Indianapolis is going to have a big positive impact on schools and small businesses that would have otherwise been hurting if people had to move or were not spending money while they were jobless. As for Carrier, they are now telling us a little bit more about exactly how the next president convinced them to stop sending these thousand or so jobs from Indiana to Monterey, Mexico. They gave us this statement late last night, quote, the incoming Trump-Pence administration has emphasized to us its commitment to support the business community and create an improved, more competitive U.S. business climate. The incentives offered by the state were an important consideration. Mr. Trump added a tweet on that where he said he thinks the deal is sweet for Carrier because they're going to sell a lot of air conditioners. And we expect to hear some more details about it when he and the vice president-elect, Mike Pence, visit the Carrier plant today for the first stop on their Thank You Victory Tour. And then a little later on tonight at their second stop, which is a big arena in Cincinnati, also part of this Thank You Tour, Martha. I mean, that's going to be fascinating. And also to see what other deals, like the Carrier one, may be around the corner and the climate that it's setting in the country. So in terms of the parade that we see walking in and out of Trump Tower every day, what do we know about what's next on the cabinet list, Peter? Maybe a few more days into next week before we get another cabinet nomination. And that is because the transition team is apparently waiting to see whether or not it will be possible for the retired General James Mattis to serve as defense secretary. The snag is that he retired in 2013, but you've got to be retired from the military for seven years to take that job. And our colleague Jennifer Griffin reports the Senate and House Armed Services Committees have already drafted some legislation that could make the Mattis pick work if he is, in fact, the pick. We also learned last night that a Secretary of State Final Four has become a Final Five. Former U.N. Ambassador and Fox News contributor John Bolton joining the mix. He'll be here tomorrow for a meeting with the President-elect. Martha. All right. Peter, thanks. President-elect Donald Trump campaigned to keep American jobs right here in America, vowing to protect workers like these. He made clear that the best way to stay competitive and protect the business for long term is to move production from our facility in Indianapolis to Monterey, Mexico. Well, Mr. Trump and Mr. Pence delivered on the Trump promise, striking a deal for hundreds, up to a thousand carrier workers to keep their jobs right here in the United States. And in a few hours, he's going to meet with some of those employees to discuss the new plan. Rick Link has worked at Carrier for 15 years. He joins us right now, live from Indianapolis. Rick, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you today, sir? Man, oh man, what a uh, couple of months you have had. I know when, when you heard uh, from that plant spokesman that they were going to close a plant, you thought to yourself, what the hell am I going to do? But pretty much, yes. You know, I'm almost 50 years old and having to think about starting over a new career. You know, it's just something I really wasn't yep. looking forward to. Sure. The carrier plant is politically probably more Democrats work there than Republicans. You're a lifelong Democrat, and yet you voted for Donald Trump. Why? You know, he spoke to me. I mean, he hit a chord inside me. You know, he was talking to the working man. He was talking to the middle class. And, you know, we're, we're tired of being the working poor. I mean, you know, we bust our tails for what? You know, 
companies are getting tax breaks, CEOs right. are getting bonuses, and we're getting the shaft. Sure. And, you know, it, it, it's hard to swallow. I mean, it's a tough pill sometimes. Yeah. What about, Rick, the critics who say, well, you know, the, the president can't do this, pick on one company at a time to make sure that they keep jobs in the United States. I'm sure you would beg to differ, though, because you've got a job. You're going to have a bright Christmas going to be able to keep your family together and, and a house as well because Trump did just that. Yeah, he did just that. I mean, you know, he's setting precedents for other companies that are, you know, possibly thinking about wanting to move south or out of the country altogether, yeah. you know, and what was, I mean, America was built on the working class and everybody seems to be taking the, our hard work and getting their bonuses, getting their whatever they want. And here we are still sure. working, hoping for overtime, hoping for, you know, a break or right. anything. So. Absolutely. Rick, I know the president's going to be, president-elect's going to be at your plant till later today. You would like to shake his hand and you would like to say what to him? Yeah, just just thank you for taking the time. I mean, you're not even the actual president of the United States yet. You're president-elect, but you've done more in your first three weeks of being elected than the last, uh, you know, the current administration has done in the last nine months for us, for for anybody really. I mean, you know, yeah. we're, we're out here to make a living. We're out here to do the right thing. You know, we're loyal to the company. We work hard for the company. And for what? So you could pick up and leave us? Yeah. I mean, okay. that goes for any company out there. All right. Uh, Rick Link, congratulations. Glad to hear that uh, a thousand people are going to keep their jobs. Tell Donald Trump we all said hi. I will do that. Thank you very much, sir. Donald Trump campaigned to keep American jobs in America, vowing to protect workers like those who found out their jobs were going to move to Mexico. President -elect Trump apparently delivering on his promise, striking a deal for hundreds of those workers, including our next guest, to keep their jobs here in the United States. Robin Maynard is a 24 year veteran of carrier air conditioning, and he joins us right now from Indiana. Robin, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Tell us how you got the word. Uh, I was running an errand with a buddy of mine, and my wife gave me a phone call and uh, asked me if I'd heard any news. And I said, what kind of news are you talking about? I said, we just got back in the vehicle and heading back to the house. And she said, uh, Donald Trump and uh, Mike Pence had come to an agreement with the uh, Carrier Corporation on keeping at least 1,000 jobs here in the United States. And when she told you that, what did you think? I was very ex uh, excited about it and, and happy to hear that something, an agreement had come to uh, so quickly on, yeah. on keeping the jobs and stuff. It sounds like your Christmas just came in November, didn't it? Yes, sir, it did. No kidding. You know, it was an announcement a while back that they were going to close that factory and move everybody, uh, move the jobs down to Mexico where people made $3 an hour. But because Mike Pence was governor, is governor of Indiana, it sounds like he's been working behind the scenes. How many people do you think, Robin, who work at Carrier right now voted for Donald Trump? Because, and I know a lot of them are Democrats and uh, all union members, because he promised to do everything in his power to keep that plant open. Percentage-wise, I'm not sure exactly how many people did, but I, I had heard through the grapevines that a lot of people was going to cross the uh, party lines and vote Republican only because we, we are ready for a change in our country and, and, and was putting our trust and faith in that... Uh, the Republican Party and Donald Trump will do and stand behind his word and get the job done, which sure. he did. Sounds like it. He's going to have an announcement tomorrow. He's going to be appearing, I think, at your plant in Indiana tomorrow, so you'll be able to thank him in person. But before then, he's probably watching right now, Robin. What would you like to say to Donald Trump about saving at least 1,000 jobs at Carrier? I would like to tell him thank you for... Uh, going out of your way and taking your uh, holiday uh, away from your family and uh, working on the carrier and employees deal and uh, sticking to your word and going to bat for all of us at carrier and and keeping our jobs here and I'd like to thank him and Mike Pence for doing it so quickly I, I didn't expect an announcement probably for three or four weeks and 
we're what two days from them meeting with them and they've already made their announcement so I'm very ex excited about it and would like to thank both of them uh, personally and uh, shake their hands hopefully tomorrow and uh, get to meet them personally well, it's, uh, it's a happy day out in, in Indiana that it's going to happen. Robin, thank you very much for joining us, uh, telling us your story, and good luck to you and your family. And we hope you have a much merrier Christmas now. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, last night, in a major win for American workers, Donald Trump tweeted that he has brokered a deal with air conditioning manufacturer Carrier to keep about 1,000 jobs that it was planning to send to Mexico right here in America. Now, we'll be joined by a longtime Carrier employee for reaction shortly. And tomorrow, President-elect Trump will travel with Vice President-elect Mike Pence to a Carrier factory in Indiana to announce more about the details and about the deal alongside company officials. But that's not the only major campaign promise that he's working to keep. Now, the president-elect's nominee for the Treasury Secretary, Steve Munchen, he's saying that the incoming president, Trump, will already put together a massive Reagan-like tax-cutting plan. Let's take a look. We're already sitting down and discussing this with Congress, and this is going to be something that happens absolutely within the first 90 days of this presidency. We're going to have a major tax reform, biggest tax reform since Reagan, and it's not just going to be a cut in corporate taxes, but it's also going to be a very large middle-income tax cut that's going to help this country. Now, Munchett is also revealing that the Trump team is moving ahead with the president-elect's plan to allow multinational corporations to repatriate trillions of dollars in profits that are held overseas at a 10% rate so that they can bring all of that money back to America to build factories, manufacturing centers, and create jobs. And then there's Obamacare. Now, Trump has vowed to repeal and replace that disastrous health care law. And last night, right here on this program, Vice President-elect Mike Pence said doing so is at the top of Mr. Trump's agenda. Let's take a look. The president-elect's made it very clear. Uh, he wants the Congress, when they convene in early January, uh, to take up the task of repealing and replacing Obamacare first. And the appointment of uh, Dr. Tom Price uh, as the head of Health and Human Services, someone who literally for the last half a dozen years has been in the forefront of efforts uh, not only to repeal Obamacare, but to put forward common sense free market solutions that will lower the cost of health insurance without growing the size of government. Now, President-elect Trump, he's not even in office yet, and he's already off to a pretty good start. During the campaign, he made very specific promises to you, the American people. And as we've said before in this program, in order for him to be a successful president, I think all the president-elect has to do, go down the list, start checking off the things that he promised. Thank you, Rally. Later tonight, Cincinnati, Ohio, celebrating a stunning victory three weeks ago. But first, Mr. Trump goes to Indiana to highlight the deal with Carrier that could save a thousand American jobs. And Rich Edson leads our coverage. He's live in Indianapolis. And what do we know so far about the terms of this deal with Carrier, Rich? Now, good morning, Bill. And we don't know all that much. Carrier in February said it was going to move 1,400 jobs from this area, including this plant. It now says it's going to keep about a thousand. It acknowledges that the state of Indiana has agreed to an incentive packages, but we don't know the details of how much that's going to cost the state. Uh, the company does say, however, that it's the result of negotiations with the incoming Trump-Pence administration, and they have made it clear, according to the company, that they support the business community and to create an improved business environment. Trump and his allies say he is making good on a campaign pledge to negotiate a deal to keep companies like Carrier from moving jobs overseas and over to other countries. Also possibly at play here, Carrier is owned by United Technologies. They get about five to six billion dollars in government contracts and there is a move within Congress to punish companies that receive federal contracts and then move jobs overseas, Bill. So there are some who are critics of this deal. Uh, what are they saying, Rich? Uh, they are. They point out we're unclear how much this is going to cost the state of Indiana in this incentive package. Uh, also, it still doesn't change the fundamentals, they say, of the U.S. economy and what's causing companies to move jobs overseas. Even Carrier acknowledges it in its statement saying, quote, this agreement in no way diminishes our belief in the benefits of free trade and the forces of globalization will continue to require solutions for the long-term competitiveness 
of the U.S. and of American workers moving forward. Others question whether other companies will start to say they're going to move jobs overseas and get some sort of package in return from their state. States uh, and companies are doing that right now, even within the United States, when companies threaten to move to different states within the U.S. Uh, Bernie Sanders, senator who also ran for president of the Democratic Party, also says that uh, Trump was taken advantage of in this negotiation. So, but still, uh, folks here, workers here, are pretty excited. Uh, they say there could be a commitment of about a thousand jobs staying in the United States. Bill, Rich, thank you, Rich Edson on scene there in Indianapolis. Thank you, Rich.